everybody. Welcome to a bonus episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast. I'm Bona. Being interrupted by my co-host here, Eric. Because that's what I do. That is exactly what you do. Uh, we are super, super excited, though, to I'm welcome kind a... kind of excited. Shut up. <laughs> that's No, that's, that's fair. That is fair. <laughs> but we've got a guest for this bonus episode. It's David Levine from the Whiskey Ring Podcast. David, so good to finally have you on, man. I know. It's been... Uh, you know, been waiting for this call for a long ass time. But I'm yeah, glad and I'm we're here. only fitting you into like a fifteen minute time slot, so hey, it's all <laughs> right, man. we're good. You, you telling somebody to steal second base? No, nah, I'm bringing him for the bullpen. So oh, oh, we're okay. gonna steal, and I'm getting David ready from the bullpen. No, gotcha. but it's awesome. I'm, I'm so David happy you're here. so happy you remembered I'm a righty. That's perfect. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all three uh, all right handers. I found that out during uh, ten bit weekend that he was a righty. <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, so uh, we all got, well, all. I mean, Eric and I shared samples, but we got sent the sample of the Barrel Seagrass, the 20 year? Is that what it is? The uh, expensive year. 20 year? The real big, uh, <laughs> expensive one um, at $500 a bottle. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> 128.12 proof. So if you break that down, if we were at a bar right now, how much do you think that would cost? I'm not good with math. I, I don't know. I, I can tell you the, the 100 mil is $66.67. Damn. 666. Six, so, six. so I know. More of that, right? Yeah. I'm getting wild over here. I'm getting demonic. It's been a long time. And by a long time, I mean probably never that I've poured something that was... <laughs> Five hundred dollars worth of whiskey, <laughs> but um, I'm really excited to get into this. I I I liked the initial release of Seagrass. Eric did not, no. uh, but we did come together and cooked. we we both liked the the sixteen year. I was kind of the same way, honestly. I wasn't a huge fan of the original, um, and then. Just pouring the last of my gray label out here. Yeah, I really Ooh, like are the gray you, label. Are you comparing? Yeah. Oh, we got enough to, okay. I think we got enough to do Yeah, that. We, we definitely got enough. If not, get a carrier pigeon between the two of you. <laughs> well, Let's see who gets it first. Yeah, I really love the, uh, the gray label one, so I was excited when this one came out. We did, too. Yeah. So, uh, it, with with that in mind, we should probably check out the uh, the gray label before we move on to the gold one, just to uh, just to be sure. Well, I remember taking this one, and it was like it was great, but it was like a it was like a certain occasion pour. It was yeah. like yeah, this yeah. was like a beach pour to me. Like I felt like I was getting like a mixed like <sighs> beachside drink when I had this gray label. Yeah, but going it's going it's that special occasion. I thought it was like a wedding pour or something like that. Was like, oh, just on the beach. That sounds just, awesome. Just just hanging out and catching some rays. Well, going to the beach to me is a special occasion because it's like no, it definitely you is. Don't have any freaking kids and work and all that, and finally just getting to sit on the beach and oh, yeah, it smells like a mixed drink to me. It's like a rum. It, it, like, it does, but going back to it. It feels more like just being whiskey <laughs> than it than it used to. Like th- this is definitely a a rye whiskey with some some fun tail ends. Oh, it's like it's like rye finished in Twizzlers. Like not licorice, Ooh. like straight up cherry Ooh, Twizzlers. Perry, Perry almost spit took on that one. <laughs> That's how it goes. I suppose. I was, I, I, I was thinking like a an old fashioned made with rum agricole, which sounds really weird, but like that fresh, really bright grassy. Type what's of rum agricole? Sweet. Nothing. What's oh, so agricole a, with you? Hey, got oh, him! Slam! Got him! Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what agricole is. I got to be honest with we, you, I don't either. <laughs> uh, Tell us. You couldn't have gone with that. I was going to be like, you know, we chatted about that before. We were going to screw with him. Ah, uh, no. All right. No, sorry. So, I, I I don't do well with bits. 
God damn. All right. So, um, so rum agricole, it's, <laughs> it's a, uh, a type of rum usually from Martinique. Uh, it's been a couple of places too, but really mostly Martinique. And it's made from fresh pressed sugar cane juice. So instead of uh, molasses or uh, some kind of other sugar byproduct, um, this is taking the cane, pressing it, and fermenting that really fresh juice. So instead of a dark uh, kind of date-like or dark fruit. Oh, rum okay. Note. Yeah, yeah. It's very fresh, a little grassy. Okay, I uh, see that. It tastes more like a sweet cane. It, yeah, it's it, very it's sweet. Honest, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It, it isn't yeah. this... Um, aren't some of the barrels Martinique rum barrels? Exactly. I mean, yeah, so they're, okay. they're rum agricole barrels, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure I wasn't like completely off or, or anything. But I mean, I'm usually off, so that's <laughs> usual for me. But. Hey, you and me both, bro. <laughs> but no, the, the the 16 year is so enjoyable. I mean, it, yeah. it's it's very candy to me. I like it's sugar the, and like cherry and stuff. I, like that. I I think one of the weirder things about it too is that it feels really really approachable, despite the fact that it is ultra premium. Very. I ultra. mean, like it it it. Glass Just, case ultra. Yeah. Exactly. What's the price on that one? <laughs> like two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. So I mean that that's bizarre to me that it uh, kind of falls into that particular category. But I'm uh, I'm excited to see how it compares to the gold label. Here. I'm gonna leave a little bit just. To... No, I'm I'm holding on to some of the the gray label mm. for sure. It doesn't drink at least to me like 130 proof either. Mm-mm. Oh no, not at all. Like, like it's, it's not Basil Hayden, but like <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it it is closer to like I would say the the hundred proof marker, or I would think so at the at the very least. But <sighs> here we go, twenty, 20 year gold label. This is a uh, in a seven fifty mil five hundred dollar oh, bottle. Gonna... I was going to do this. You usually get to do like a cork pop or something like oh, that. Oh, you're going to do the, the crack. crack. The crack. The, cor- the crack. Uh, oh, there we uh, go. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very good. Very good. Very Air- good. Uh, it's the most <laughs> muted response I've ever gotten to one of those. Things. It was a golf <laughs> clap. Mm, yeah. It was, it was like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've had claps more. <laughs> <laughs> Great ass! <laughs> you invited me. Sorry. You're you're right. Okay. They smell oddly the same. They do, but the the gold label is brighter. What's the age on this one? Twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty years. I was gonna say it's getting kind of a tight nose on this one. Tight. Not a lot flowing tight. out of the glass. Tight. <laughs> it's a tight. No. It's a tight, tight boy. That is a tight nose. Okay, yeah. I get a little bit more. It's a little honey? More honey and fruity. It's like you took the 15 year, but you added like a little layer of honey on top of it. Yeah. This this is where, so like I was saying with the, the 16 year, the gray label, where we had like initially talked about it being a a more beachy pour. Right. This kind of brings it back for me. Like, this is I, kind I, of I, like a, a at your house, sitting on the back deck. Yeah. Maybe even camping a little bit. Like. Yeah. Now, I think it's important to bring up, what about this says $500 a bottle for you? There's nothing, I mean, I'm just going to be honest, there's nothing that... I initially get off the nose. That's like this is a five hundred dollar. Like I mean, I, is, yeah, I don't, I don't get like you know. I feel like I've had other things. I've, I've had other things probably sub one hundred that have made me feel the same way. Yeah, if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. David's already taken a drink though. It's, it's a lot of honey. It's a yeah. lot of honey on the I nose. To, it's a honey I'm, bun. I'm really not getting. I'm not getting a ton on the nose, but that might just be. I get a honey bun. I like do a huge pour. You open the package. There's that icing. And honey, icing and honey to me on the nose. Let me ask you a question, Eric. Mm-hmm. Have you ever opened a sample like this and not immediately thought honey buns? Yes. 
Do you think I say that for everything? I mean, I don't feel like I <laughs> say that for over here. What? What? <laughs> no. I mean, the broadest thing Listen, is though, that like you know, honey it button, smells like, like Little Debbie, and then I got to ask questions. So, well, I do compare a lot of things to Little Debbie. Cake, so, but okay, Honey Bun on the nose. Yeah, I, yeah. Honestly, once you sip it a little bit, the nose opens up more. This is not. This is not bad at all. Yeah, <laughs> it better not be. I I feel like. This deserves the hyper ultra supreme premium tag. I mean this this drinks like something that is very rare or does not actually come about there's, very often. There's a a barrel this barrel dark tobacco note mixed with honey in it that Honestly, I haven't, I don't know if I've had that with anything. Like, it's like, I mean, me, my style, it's like honey buns in a barrel. If you can picture that in your head, it's almost, it's, and it, and I always like taste and smell and colors. And this is like a, I mean, it sucks. It doesn't suck. The it sucks that I like it better not suck. No, no, I'm I'm simplifying it by saying yeah. like I think gold in my head, gold as in honey and barrel. I'm thinking you know yellow what I mean? as well. Mm. Yeah, and I hope that I'm not like persuaded by the label, but either way, it's it's like honey bun and honey in a barrel. It's almost like when you get one of those honey finished bourbons or yeah. rye. This is what I would immediately think that it would taste yeah. like. I feel like the price tag though needs to be like moved down. Like I feel like this it's, would it's this would be like the gray. Three fifty. I feel like this would be the gray label yeah. price. Yeah. And the gray label should have been like a hundred to hundred and fifty. You know what? You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. That's that's kinda of what I'm like, this is really good. I can't afford so it, but between, it's really good. No, I mean uh I mean going between the two, going back to the gray label, the gray label is still like tastes great has all the flavors up there but it develops kind of a raw edge to it like a yeah. hot proof edge and the gold label it's two and a half proof points lower uh and it's so rounded and dare Wait, which, i say smooth for <laughs> which which uh oh yeah it is 128 versus 130 sorry for whatever reason, I thought that the the gold label was like one twenty ish. It does not drink uh, yeah, one hundred twenty eight per. No, it definitely that. doesn't. No, it definitely doesn't. Um, I think that this is. It's like the the epitome of people trying to find a smooth whiskey, right? Like like something that they would consider to be not difficult to approach it's not like offensive to their their palate or anything but the big problem is it's it's price and it it well, i want more people to this. drink this i want why? i want this to be okay. like something available to, to folks okay why okay why is this at the price it is like i'm asking you to like I 100% know right. that you have more knowledge than I do about the stuff. Like I can pair shit all day, but why? Why is this this price? This is a Canadian so rye. It's right? got to be the age, yeah. right? But like you. Well, so got... that was my that was my question to compare it to because you guys had the the first gold label, right? The gold label bourbon. I uh, I don't know if we had. I that don't think. Huh? Yeah, I don't think I so think either. You did. did we? If we if we did, then I don't remember it. <laughs> Which I mean, statement in itself, right there. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. But like the the gold label bourbon is a little younger. It's like fifteen and sixteen year old barrels. But for me, it kind of got up there just because like a fifteen sixteen year old bourbon at 
115 to 120 proof, whatever it was, you could kind of make the argument for 500 if it was a super premium product. Yeah. But this one, I mean, I, I agree. It certainly tastes super premium, ultra premium, mm. or yeah, you know, uber premium, hyper, uh, if yeah. hyper infinite, uh, ultra super mega premium yeah <laughs> well while, while i was talking perry brought up thesaurus.com I was just reading off the screen i did actually um, yeah it's yes. uh yeah but but this like thinking about the think about the three seagrasses out there the basic one should be 70 bucks i wouldn't um and it's what now like it's 120 150 yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah thank you fred um <laughs> <laughs> you know, i i want to see you so the great quick, ass <laughs> quick, quick, quick sidebar, David. I I would really like to see you interview Fred. I'm curious what that would be I like. I thought you were going to say I'd like to see him in an ascot. I I would love to see you, David, in an ascot for sure. No, I I I think that I uh, and you... nothing else. Okay, it's <laughs> um. <laughs> just a just a mini barrel. I'd pay, over I'd pay the... premium for that. <laughs> No, I think I think that you interviewing Fred would be really interesting and a lot of fun to uh, it would engage be, with. No joke. Like, I, so, yeah. No, I I would love to. And if uh, we only knew somebody that knew yeah. Fred Minnick. I know. God, so you know, so ethereal, unapproachable, way out there. If we only knew two people who lived in the same freaking state as him. So um, I think we've we've talked enough at uh, you know in okay bye. In generalities, oh, well, okay. See you, see you, Dave. Uh, we talked Sorry, enough well, in generalities, well. but I, I also think that uh, it's it's time for us to kind of talk about whether or not we would buy this in our specific notes, and you know, just just drive this home for a five hundred dollar <laughs> bottle of whiskey. That's the biggest issue I have with it. I mean, I overall, just, I just don't understand. Like, my brain can't comprehend why this is five hundred dollars. Yeah, I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. Like, I mean, part of it is probably because you know they they bought the barrels at a at a premium, and then they also went through the extra work of like finishing it and crafting it, and uh, like I I from from that aspect, I get it. But I don't know. There's not a lot of bottles on the market at five hundred dollars where I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Can I just be honest? It's like I I like this. I appreciate this. I would love to have this, but it's not like saying you took a I'm I'm just gonna say it. It's not like saying you took a twenty year old Kentucky bourbon. Yeah. That I and you finished it or you bottled it or something like that. It's like, this is a 20-year-old Canadian rye, which is good, but I don't feel like it's $500 good. Yeah. Like, I just don't get it. Like, mm -hmm. And that that's nothing, nothing against the brand or anything like that. It's just, I don't know. Like, I could, I could take the Optanium that you have. Yeah. That's how old? 26 years. years. 26 years. Yeah. I know it's not finished in a bunch of stuff, but I would enjoy that just as much for, what, under $100? Yeah, I got it for like 80 or 90, something yeah, like that. But yeah. like to me, the guy who likes high-proof stuff, who enjoys these ryes, these high-proof ryes and stuff, I just... I, I there's so many options that are not five hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm not saying that it doesn't taste bad. I just can't get behind five hundred dollars. I don't get it. Yeah, I don't that, get it. That's kind of that's kind of where I was going with the comparison of the three seagrasses of like it at MSRP. The first one fine makes sense, well within barrel range. Uh, the two fifty even it's a little high for me, but let's say two hundred is okay instead of two fifty for the gray label. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, as a special pour to you know pull out when you got someone who's has the high proof, you know, who can handle high proof. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I, mean, I don't, I don't see you know plus two years or plus sorry plus four years, um, 
but what is basically the same whiskey. You know, plus four years, but double the price. Yeah. I just, I yeah, I can't justify that either. I think it's really good, and Eric, I agree. About like three, three fifty, I would, I would spend a bonus, you know, part of a bonus on this or something. I sure. would. I, yeah. I think you're right. Like, I think if this is good enough to say, like my extra, my fun money, as I call it, each paycheck. Like, right. if nothing else was coming out, and I wanted to buy a big price bottle, this will be good. Like, I would. I'd pair this with a honey bun all day. Like it's 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 good, but five hundred dollars, man. It's just like you put it down to that two hundred to three hundred dollar range. Yeah, I highly mm-hmm. consider it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and also, so one more thing on that is that uh, the other gray label that came out at the same time Seagrass did was the twenty four year old Canadian. I got that here. Give me a second. Um, this twenty four year old Canadian rye finished in Oloroso. And XO Armagnac casks. That was at 121.64 proof. It was also 250. That one, a 24 year old Canadian whiskey, uh, I would have easily paid 254. Happily. Hmm. Just put it on my card right away. Uh, and I thought that was a deal, frankly, on it. 24 sure. year old double finished whiskey for that. So that's, that's, the, that's a barrel finished 24 24 year old canadian rye that's cheaper than the one we just had yeah yeah so this one's the gray label so those are always a 250 and yeah i thought both that and the gold show the same great blending skills the smoothing out of all the rough edges or any rough edges the proof does not drink like the proof but is still powerful enough to satisfy a proof for like i am Five is mm, too much for me. Yeah. I mean, it's just, too it's just yeah, there's a lot about $500. It, it, yeah. I mean, un, un, unless it's like a 50 year old bourbon. <laughs> but you know, but you know what I mean, though. Like if we're if we're going by That's just true. the yeah. the ten year the ten year dollar yeah. 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 year yeah. ten dollars per year uh, mm-hmm. method. Um, I couldn't imagine paying five hundred dollars for this this particular whiskey. I, and if they I can and, find twenty four year old Canadian whiskey and sell it for two fifty. Yeah. How is twenty year old Canadian whiskey in three finishes? That's what I'm saying. Like, yes. Yeah. No. 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 I totally. I totally agree. Um, yeah. It's. It just seems kind of mismatched. Yeah. For me. So. I I think like overall if if and, and we're kind of like bouncing between the the two rating systems that we have on the show, you know, between the the podcast and the YouTube and the yay systems. And the, and yeah. the numbers, yeah. Like overall this is probably and it's because the the price is so expensive. I'm probably going like a 14 out of 20 because it is a very, very good whiskey. But you know, if I, if I had to really break it down, like the, the price is like a one. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't even know if I know at this point, I don't know what the price, the price like level is because it's like, I could, I could easily say, get a sample don't pay for this yeah. and then decide for yourself whether you want to try to get it like yeah, but, <laughs> yeah that'd be like a don't, bottle bar there, there is like system. no decision making process with this yeah, i feel like exactly it, it's yeah. just like it, yes i can go for it or no i would I, love to have this it. if somebody poured it for me but i just can't justify paying the that amount for it yeah for what it's worth too like i'm looking at the tasting notes that barrel put up for this um, Let's hear them. And uh, we don't have another 20 minutes. You know their taste notes are long. <laughs> um, but suffice it to say, like the the flavor notes for me are pretty spot on. Like just picking out a couple of things, you know, palate, Meyer lemons, clover honey. Honey, uh, yeah. A little ripe pineapple, you know, tiny bit of acidity, but not much. Yeah. Um, cast strength rye. 
uh, peppercorn, a little sweet herb, apricot, long lasting finish. Like just picking those couple of things out does line up. But I, you know, with Perry, I got to agree. It's about a, a 14. It would, it would get like a three and a half to four, if not a little more on all the other categories, but the yeah. price, I'm, I'm going to well, give the price a two, honestly. <sighs> Okay, uh, that that's really interesting, actually. Like, what, what, um, <laughs> so why? I guess. <laughs> I guess objectively, I would put the, I would give the price of one. In context, I would put it a two. So, because I keep thinking to myself, if this didn't have the name seagrass on it, sure. If it was anything else, would it be a great a gold label? And because of what has happened with seagrass over the past six months, would it be 500? And that's where I think, you know, in terms of availability of something like this, rarity, exclusivity, that's where I'm willing to maybe give it a 500. Yeah. You know, but in the, so that's why like in context, that's what I'm thinking. If it had anything else on it other than seagrass, I don't think they could justify charging 500. Yeah. Cuz who knows if yeah. they were going to take that that liquid and put it in, through the whole seagrass process. Yeah. They could have seen what happened with you know, we're picking out, out Fred here on this, but like him naming it one of the best whiskeys of the year, Seagrass Original, blew up the market for seagrass. So do they follow that process after that or if you pick something else and seagrass isn't up there is something else on there? Who like, let me ask you to this: Who who's this marketed to? Like, what person? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Honestly, like yeah, I I really that's don't a fair know. Question. I really don't know because you look, look at me like the guy. I'm a bourbon nerd. Love single barrels. Love you know the occasional finishes. Love unique things. Like mm-hmm. this is not like. It's almost like if it was a like I said a, an older bourbon or something like that this i know what these older ryes go for on other brands yeah what is this to me like i don't know like i don't get the the consumer of this i don't really either because i mean there there's no as as far as i am concerned no particular group of consumers that rye whiskey is like or Canadian rye whiskey yeah. is like their go to thing. And th- this also like it it furthers the confusion because it is finished and there's nobody that like again, as far as I know, is saying I n- I need this this finished yeah rye whiskey. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Maybe that's actually a, a good point towards why somebody would consider this ultra hyper beyond premium because there is nobody that is buying this as a uh, as a regular drinker, I suppose. You know, like it, it's it is supposed to be in some aspects special, yeah, or something that they they would buy for you know, I going to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, am am I off base with that, David? What do you think? I mean, I'm, first, I'm surprised Eric only put up three fingers instead of one on that one. But um, <laughs> no, I, I think <laughs> no, I think you're totally right. There's, and I was I was. I was listening to what you were saying, but I was also trying to think about what else is out there at 500 MSRP. You know, it's it's mostly like at any category. I mean, yeah, it's mostly like you scotches. Know, yeah, exactly. Maybe, That's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. The scotches, the single barrel scotches. Maybe I don't remember what the Heaven Hill 17 was at MSRP. Two fifty. It was like three. Is two only two fifty? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh damn! <laughs> somebody somebody just put one up for twelve hundred on. Group. Yeah, I, well, I was like, gonna say I haven't, I haven't seen it without that extra zero, but yeah, um, yeah, like there's nothing comparable to. So like I, th- I think we'll see. I mean, the the gold label bourbon I know sold sold out in most markets. 
but it was the first of its kind. It was the first what thing was, they put out of five hundred bucks. What was the uh, the stats on that? Like, was it's Kentucky bourbon? Was it a blend? Like, well, I don't know anything about that one. I'm sure it had MGP in it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, now, how old was it? It was sixteen years old. Okay, sixteen. So that's one hundred thirteen point five four proof. That's it. Uh, distilled and aged in Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. So, do we think the oldest yeah. part of that was Dickel? Probably. If if the oldest part of that was Kentucky or MGP, I would I would be all on it. But like, I feel like. But think about sixteen year old because the youngest part of it has to be sixteen. So think sixteen year old MGP or sixteen sure. year old well, that's true. Kentucky. Okay, and now I'm thinking about that. Yeah. So that you know, that that brings me in more than and it does say a blend of sixteen and seventeen year old straight bourbons. So so it's it's at that least that. That's yeah. that's a lot more appealing to me than a than a old Canadian rye finished and stuff. Like yeah. So I don't know. Like I, I would love some older MGP Kentucky, even even some of the older Dickel stuff that I've had that are like single barrels I can get behind. But like I don't know, like five hundred dollars. It's just it's so just much. so much. It's so much yeah. money. The, I the big question. I don't know, for me, the big question is going to be: Are they going to pull back on this? Like talking to Will Will Shragas over Ooh. Barrel, they got they have four tiers, uh, four prices across their entire line. Yeah, you know. And this is the fourth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The 250 was successful. The, 250, the gray seagrass went out. The 24-year-old went out. All the new whiskeys that they produce under the gray label sell out pretty quickly. Uh, pretty much except the rum. Right. And and I think that'll come quickly, too. But at 500, the bourbon sold. But will this sell? My bet is yes, which means they'll keep coming out with these. Yeah. We yeah. have that same question each time. I... It... Yeah. I think it will sell at the 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 biggest problem I think though is just brand recognition. You know, like it it's and and I know that I know that seagrass in and of itself has garnered so much praise. Yeah. And it continues to as well. It's a more well known name. Yeah, uh, but yeah. but I, I guess like my big hang up is does it deserve that? You know, like oh overall, like as a brand within a brand, does it deserve all of the the accolades that it has gotten over the past few months? I I would argue I I, I don't know. I can I can kind of sit on the fence. I will not I will not <laughs> It's going to be painful. I will not well, buy, true. buy a bottle that says seagrass on it. That's just It just period. Yeah, I mean one the the bottom level one I don't like. Yeah. And the other ones it's just too expensive for me. Yeah. I enjoy the top ones, the gray and the gold. But I don't think I would buy them. Sure. And I'm not going to buy that lower one because I just don't like it. Yeah. So. But. I'm going going, going back to the rating system. Parability, this is a honey bun. It's a honey bun. Yeah. All day. If you, <laughs> if you buy this, get a honey bun and pour it over the honey bun and eat it. And it will be great. So overall. Yay, nay, may. I'm going to say. I'm I'm gonna go like low tier. Meh. I'm gonna go yeah meh. As but it, in but like, it's only it's only because of how expensive it is. It's so good. It's really really wanna, good. If you want to get curious, get it at a bar or find that friend who buys yeah. everything and try it with them before you buy it. That's yep. what I'll say for sure. Mm-hmm. David, I'm yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go high end meh. Because I did really like it. Yeah. It, it, I did really like it, but at that at that price, I can't. Yeah. It's if you have that kind of money floating around, go for it. You know, assalamu alaikum, enjoy it. But like, he's nah, he's throwing out I, the Yiddish at us. 
I mean, that was Arabic, so you're really far off. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Well, anyway, it was one of the tribes I'm, of I'm Abraham. Just, <laughs> I'm just screwing up your... I'm screwing up this whole show for you right no, now. You're not. Never. I got never I, in a million like, years could this show be screwed yeah, up by anybody. Agricole, I just did a whole show Agricole's based on what screwed. I thought we should do, and it was something else. <laughs> and that's why he's back in the garage. <laughs> exactly. But anyway, I think that about does it for this bonus episode. Um, David, we need to uh, get you on for a, a, a regular one, a main episode. Full episode. For sure. Through the whole thing. Um, Absolutely. But have you guys on full episode for me too? That would be so much fun. Together or separate? No, together. <laughs> or separate. Or separate. Ooh. No, yeah. no I would, uh, I'm down for anything. I love <laughs> you both. Like honestly, we we, we all talk to, absolutes. We we talk together all the time, and I love Marine Five, so I'm good. <laughs> so that was my first joke that I made in that chat. It was, he was a maroon long before you knew him. <laughs> Dave, where can people find you, all your things and uh, all, all that? Uh, you can find reviews and tasting notes on whiskeyandmyweddingring.com, uh, Whiskey Ring Podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms. Um, I've got starting tomorrow, whenever this airs, that tomorrow, uh, I've got a new segment with our friend John Hughes. It's true. Ooh, As the first guest, sir. Yes. Under, under, under the, the influence. Under the influence. Under the influencer, and you get to find Earth. out who is under and who is over. But John is going to be the first two episodes because we talked for first three two? hours. We talked for <laughs> three hours. Yes, we and gave John I Hughes a two-parter that. episode. I believe it, dude. We went. To, we cut it because it was one thirty a.m. my time, and I had to get up at six thirty. <laughs> that guy goes. All we could have kept long. going. Yeah. That guy's got Me stamina too, man. of we, Val we Venus. kept going. <laughs> stamina of. Of what? Sorry? Val, Val Venus. It's, it's a wrestling oh, thing. I thought you said... St- no, no. That's fine. I thought you said the stamina of Val Venus, And I was like, I didn't know the Val Venus, The Val had that. <laughs> that's a new line out there. I hadn't heard that one. Uh, <laughs> surprise! Anyway. Surprise. So, so yeah. So, sorry. Pa- uh, that's a Patreon only. But, um, you know, patreon.com slash whiskey my wedding ring. New episode. First episode comes out June 10th. Uh, every Friday, I'm going to have a new episode with uh, YouTubers, influencers, Instagrammers, uh, even these two, and uh, it's going to be <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm I think my invite got lost in the mail. Then, <laughs> <laughs> regardless, uh, David, thank you so much for joining us for this bonus episode. If you want to follow us, it's at my bourbon pod and at Whiskey Mutant on all of the social media channels. Go and support the show at patreon.com slash my bourbon podcast. Uh, uh, subscribe if you haven't already yeah. on YouTube. Uh, hey. hey. Don't hey. cut that out. Hey, David, get out of I've my been, I have been holding. I've been holding one in for half an hour. Let it out. Let, go let ahead. It go ahead. Let it go. Let it go. None, well, well, no. Now, now I've got performance anxiety. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't just let anything out of my mouth. I mean, That's on. fair. That's fair. Yeah. You can also find all of our apparel and merchandise at bourbonshop.thirdlist.com. Leave us a comment, a review, please, on the, the podcast, all that good stuff. Uh, if you want to, I don't know, talk to us, 859-428-8253, Slide leave us a voicemail. DM. Slide in. Slide oh, in. Sorry. Uh, we get, huh? quick, quick note on that. I, I have to ask this. Yes. I was listening to one of the episodes recently. Did you guys ever have the TV commercial uh, where you call the number to get that particular cable subscriber? I was like, da na na da na na eh, eh, uh, uh, as the as the theme song. Did we? All right, I'll have to, I'll have to send it to you. But it was okay, like, cool. It was it was it's been 15 years and it's still in my wife and ours heads. <laughs> and that's how I remember the Bower Rings numbers. I just put those numbers in. Nine four two eight eight two five three. Eight, two, five, three. There we go. So, All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. anyway, that that does it. David, again, thank you so much for, for joining us for this bonus review. Bonus. Until next time, I'm Perry. I'm Eric. I'm David. 
And this is my bourbon podcast bonus episode. Which is what you will need to purchase this bottle. Damn. <laughs> You're not kidding. Anyway, bye. <laughs>